Hey guys, today on The Average Garage, I'm gonna show you guys how to check your intercooler pipes on pretty much any car. This is specific to the Pajero and the Triton, but same principles apply for any vehicle. Um, please, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and like the video. Um, if it helps you out, I'd appreciate all the support I can get. So yeah, please hit the subscribe button and enjoy the episode. So uh, the reason you might want to do this is general maintenance or you might have had a DVF error come up and this is a very common cause for it. So today I'm going to run you through it, it's pretty simple. You will get your hands a little bit dirty but it's worth it, it's easy to check so let's do it. So you're going to want to start by popping your bonnet of course and uh, yeah, down here this is one of your intercooler hoses, this main one here and it runs down under your power steering reservoir here. So there's just two 10 mils or Phillips head to undo those. So the next one's a little trickier. It's under the front of the turbo here that you can just see the flat head right down in the center there. And then there is a, another flat head just down there. So as you can see, they're super easy to get to. So yeah, I've just got the basic tools here. I've got a Phillips head because I thought one, well, one's a Phillips head, one's a flat head. But um, yeah, I'm gonna use the 10 mil with a long extension and that'll be sweet. So. I'm going to go grab a flathead and then that'll get the other side done or the driver's side. So yeah, let's do that. I'm going to go ahead and remove these two bolts. That way I can remove the power steering fluid reservoir out of the way. And that will give me enough access to remove the hose properly because it's a bit tricky getting in underneath it. Alright, so popped the washer bottle lid off. Popped the power steering fluid reservoir out. So I'm going to try and just maneuver that over that way. Now you can see the intercooler hose. So this is the passenger side. So we're going to go ahead and just try and wiggle this and pull to manoeuvre it off. Which can be a bit tricky. But you'll get there with some persistence and some struggle. Alright, now we can feed this out. Like so. Now what you're looking for on the intercooler hoses is like just a split or a nick. Um, and usually, especially if you don't have a catch can, there'll be some oily residue around it. So that's what you're looking for. Now, if you have a look there, that's a nice big one. So I kind of had a feeling this would be the problem. I checked them several times by hand, but I've obviously missed this part. Um, I can feel just here, there's another crack just starting to form underneath where the fibers have split because you can sort of, when you press the rubber in, it's really soft in a line which is where all the fibers would have split. So they're a couple of hundred bucks, but they're cheaper than a DPF. That's a nice big boost leak there. So that's probably why my car has given me DPF errors. So yeah, I'm gonna check the other side and then we'll order some hoses. that out the way so I've already popped this side off so if I cram that down there oh. sometimes the hoses can like almost weld themselves onto the plastic it's not actually welding they just get stuck so what you can do is use your fingers or a small screwdriver and try and just pry the edges up and it will just break the seal of it and always try and twist them. Okay, so this one was stuck on there nice and solid. So, finally got it off. It was a massive struggle compared to uh, what I thought it should be, but that just means it was sealing very good. So this one, we're just gonna have a quick look over. I think this one will be all right, considering the other one's split. So, yeah. This one's looking like it's in pretty good shape. Now I will contact Mitsubishi about warranty for this thing because it is only just out of the warranty period and this is a pretty common issue. So we'll see if they can come to the party, but um, for now. Now you've seen how to take them off, we're gonna follow the same procedure to put them back on. Once they're back on, the car is good to drive again. If you do have a split and you are remote or something like that, you can patch it, um, use a hell of a load of tape or even some super glue, anything to really 
um, yeah, try and seal that up. However, that being said, um, make sure if you do use some form of glue, make sure it is fully solidified and cured um, because pretty much you don't want anything going into the engine. These don't pull a hell of a lot of vacuum, but they can under certain circumstances and you don't want anything to go into the engine that shouldn't be in there. If it can't get past your filter, it shouldn't be in there. So yeah, pretty much, um, yeah, if you get stranded, tape it up, uh, get yourself home or to the nearest town and order yourself some more hoses. They're not super expensive from what I've heard um, and there are aftermarket options available. So yeah, look into that, see which direction you want to go. Um, otherwise, press Mitsubishi, see if they'll do it under warranty. Uh, you never know your luck unless you ask. So especially those who have been servicing with Mitsi, they usually try and look after their customers um, a little bit more if you've been servicing with them for a while. Sometimes they'll do things under goodwill. So I'm going to give Mitsi a call, but I'm going to chuck this back together. And yeah, now you know how to check your intercooler hoses. All right guys, so the job is done. Um, I've put it back together as much as I can because I'm gonna wait to hear from Mitzi. If Mitzi do come to the party and replace that hose, it's already apart, I can just chuck it all back together and then worry about it then. But for now, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, you know how to check your intercooler hoses. If you have a split one, um, the side, main side effects of a split intercooler hose are louder turbo noise, uh, very poor fuel economy and surging. And also the last one is DPF issues. Now I've had surging issues and DPF issues myself, which is why I decided to check them. Glad I did, because um, I gave them a couple of quick squeezes and checks while I was on the road last and over the last couple of weeks and I didn't find anything. Took them off, inspected them, and as you can see, I found a pretty large split. All right guys, so I've got a new hose, as you can see here. Brand Spanker from Mitzi. Thank you very much Mitzi for actually coming through with warranty. All right, so we're gonna check the hose in. Um, first of all, I'm gonna pull the rags out that I put in the throttle body and intercooler before bad things happen. Because it's good to good practice to block them up, but not good practice to leave them in there and then fit things. So yeah, we're gonna check the hose in. All right, so there it is. The new hose is all in and fitted and tight. Everything's put back. Um, no harm, no foul. Haven't broken anything, which is unusual for me. All right, so it's all in, it's together. So now I'm going to take those rags out of the engine bay, take the light out of the engine bay, take it for a test drive and see what sort of improvement it's made now that it doesn't have a massive boost leak. So it may idle a bit funny to start with because it may have learned how to drive uh, with a boost leak or a vacuum leak. Um, so yeah, it might run a bit iffy, but we'll see how we go. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. This is the last of the episode. Uh, thank you for Mitzi to coming on board for warranty for this issue. Um, yeah, thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you later.